What's going on, Jeff fans? Appreciate you stopping in. Joe Douglas just wrapped up an interview on ESPN Radio recapping the offseason and the draft. Uh, first things first, he did you know temper expectations for any additional signings or moves, saying they're pressed against the budget. Yeah, man, the Jets don't have a ton of money. It is what it is. Uh, they made a lot of all-in moves. They have like $9 million in cap space. They still have to sign their draft class. So, and you don't want to go up to $0 in cap space. You want to save some money for post-June first cuts or trade deadline. We'll talk about that in a second. And uh, I'm kind of good with it. Like, I'll, I'll make videos as opportunities come up. Like, I talked about Zay Jones being released this morning. I'm like, yeah, he could be like a depth receiver. No big deal. Uh, but if you remember last year, my my tune was way different. It was like, you got to get DeAndre Hopkins. You definitely trade for this backup lineman. What are we doing? And, and I know a lot of the replies are like, we're good with the guys we have. We don't need any more talent. Why are you being a hater on this guy or that guy? And it's like, dude, I'm just being honest. I didn't mean to be a wet blanket. I love the Rodgers get. I love the defense. I was super stoked going into last year, but I did not pick the Jets to win the division. I did not rank them first in roster rankings in their own division. I did not think they were like a, a team that was going to win the Super Bowl. Um, playoff team, sure. But I just felt like the offensive line planning of Dwayne Brown and Mekhi Becton being a primary tackles with Max Mitchell and Carter Warren being their primary backups and Alan Lazard being your number two receiver is was not a serious formula to win a Super Bowl. And now we'll never know because Rodgers went down and, and further injuries you know, compounded it. But I don't think that age to be a particular hot take. And I don't think the Jets think so because they got three new offensive line starters and two new receivers that are properly slotting Lazard as most likely wide receiver four which is fine. Is he is he overpaid as that? Yeah, but whatever. You got Quincy Williams an all-pro linebacker for 6 million. So it all, you know, comes out in the wash. And the and the offensive line insurance now of Olu Fashionu. Yes, you have older tackles in Smith and Moses who but at least are very very good. They're better than um, Brown and Beckton when they're on the field first of all. And second of all, if they have to come off the field, you have a number 11 overall pick. Who can come in and if they didn't go offensive line in the first round then i'd be annoying you guys about you got to sign david bakhtiari but they they did so I, th I think we're good there you know wide receiver has a lot of variance so it could go some different ways but at the end of the day uh, garrett wilson mike williams is your two lazard and corley is your three and your four uh a lot of teams that are you know playoff or contending teams they have a similar or, or less talent at, at wide receiver it's really about you had to get um, push Lazard down to to about four, um, and beyond that five and six, you know most teams just roster kind of developmental guys. So we'll see. And additionally, I think that the Jets are they're hedging their their bets with the keeping a bullet in the chamber for the trade deadline. I think that trade where they traded a fourth rounder this year for a third rounder next year that screamed like trade deadline stash. So they'll keep a little bit of money in the reserves. They'll keep that pick and they'll say okay. Let's see on Mike Williams' health. Let's see on the development of this guy or that guy, and we'll see where we're at. And if we need to make one more move, we'll make it. But right now, I, th I think they're I think they're good enough to go into the season and feel like we're a contender. And if and if we have to make a move, then we have to. But I'm not like slamming the table for like any position where you where you desperately have to upgrade. Um, we talked about JFM being traded. Look, I like JFM a lot. I think he's kind of underrated. I know he doesn't get a lot of sacks, but you know, guy who who's durable, who's versatile, who. Uh, it was good in the locker room. It gets you 50 pressures, like 50 pressures, uh, and awesome edge run defense. Are you know that's what you got to look at. Like just judging a defensive lineman, a guy who plays on the interior bunch just by sacks, I think is kind of silly in 2024. But um, yeah, it was business decisions. You have to you have to look at the off season in the totality, right? You know, doing this where sometimes you can't see the the forest or the trees. Yeah, in a vacuum, do I like the the JFM trade? No. In a vacuum, do I think the Kinlaw contract is a little rich? Sure. But if you were to back, if we were to back up, whatever, two months ago, and you're going to tell me that you're going to get um, a starting offensive line you feel good about, you're going to actually get uh, a awesome left tackle rookie who doesn't even have to play right away, who could be a swing tackle, more on Olu in a second. You're going to get Malachi Corley, who's your draft crush, and you're going to get a wide receiver too. You're going to lose Huff and... Uh, JFM, but you're gonna get Hassan freaking Reddick. I, I would have signed for that. I would have I would have signed for that. Like that, it's not it's not like better than a lot of the mock off seasons that I you know me or other people making videos put together. So yeah, I'm not gonna like obviously the, I was live when the JFM trade went down. So I you know I threw a fit for like 20 minutes, but you know I'm over it now. <laughs> um, what else? So Olu, he said he's gonna practice. Uh, at different positions, practice at left tackle, practice at right tackle, maybe other positions. 
Yeah, they all do that, man. I mean, you, you, did, that in, you did that in high school. You do it in college. You practice all positions. Now, for me, I just don't want to see Olu at guard, but I don't think they will do that. He's got to be the swing tackle. Yeah, like, yes, he can He can play, learn how to play left tackle and right tackle at the same time because you, it's a balance, right? Obviously, you want to prioritize Olu's development, but at the same time, if, if Morgan Moses has to miss a game or miss a month, you're not going to say, good luck, Aaron Rodgers, time Carter Warren season. No, you're not going to do that. You're going to put your best player out there. Um, so left tackle, right tackle, that's fine. Guard, I don't see it. I didn't see any anything in his scouting report that mentioned guard tackle versatility. His like build and skill set is kind of the least the least conducive to transitioning to guard out of like all the tackles. Him and Alt are not really guardy. All uh, right, so he'll be the swing tackle. That's that's totally fine. I'm not that that didn't really mean anything to me that he's going to practice at multiple positions. They all do that at every every level of football. Um, he said they. He wouldn't confirm whether or not they wanted to trade out for Roma Dunze. I will confirm with common sense and the body language in the war room. They wanted Rome. I'll confirm with Aaron Rodgers' body language when the uh, when he called into McAfee. Um, he wanted Rome. No, that's not. No, look, Olu and some extra picks is an awesome, awesome consolation prize. May even age to be the better uh, way to go. But yeah, obviously they and they also reportedly called up to the Giants from Malik Neighbors. Couldn't get a deal done. It's tough, man. I mean, neighbor they probably might have wanted next year's first for neighbors. Um, and obviously Atlanta, to risk losing their quarterback, that was going to be super pricey. So they probably didn't anticipate Atlanta going quarterback, and that threw a monkey wrench into their whole plan. Whereas if Atlanta was going defense, then they probably felt more comfortable a deal could get done. But then they pivoted to Corley. They started making calls at pick 45 for Corley. So I like the aggressiveness to go up and get your, get your guy since that you had to pivot to offensive line in round one. Jordan Travis, he raved about him. Quick eyes, compact release, accurate on the slot fade. Like, I, I don't know about JT. I, I've only watched, like, some, uh, like, one game, and it wasn't even all 22 uh, footage for that game. But um, I, I don't think it's, like, a James Morgan wasted pick. I think this, this kid has a chance to be something in the league, right? And that's that's good to have a guy like that on your roster when you – uh, are rostering just Aaron Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor, who probably at most are going to be on your team two more years. Then he said they know what's at stake this year. You know, they know that they're it's a put-up-or-shut-up year. But, you know, no big surprises. And uh, there it is. Go Jets.